So I don't know if you guys like the video. So good morning, everyone. My name is Marco. I am a grateful naturalized citizen to the United States of America. And Donald Trump is my president. Uh, you know, it's very important that I say that knowledge of the path is not a substitute for walking it. I, I truly feel that I have experienced the American dream at every stage. And uh, I created... Uh, we actually, we're live right now on a, and I want to say hi to everybody, on a news channel out of Miami. I'm, I created a show called Let's Talk About Politics. Um, I am not a professional speaker. I'm not a politician. I'm just a, you know, concerned citizen of society. And uh, I have had the opportunity, the blessing of, being, uh, I guess, initiated by the mainstream media, being ridiculed, being destroyed by them. And uh, I learned through uh, my path that some people's American dream is to take your American dream. That's how I can sum up my, 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 um, my walking, my, my journey here. But uh, I can't, like I said, there's... Um, I don't know, there was a picture when I was nine years old. That's when I hear, heard about uh, America. My dad had already been doing some work in Sonora. Uh, they were harvesting uh, grapes. But he never came to the United States. But he got paid in dollars. So he already took things back to Mexico that were made in America. Anything that was made in America when I was a kid was great, guys. We would fight over it. It doesn't matter what it was. An old shirt. Some jeans that were, you know, uh, with holes everywhere. Uh, we would fight over them because he was America. Uh, my dad kept coming back, and finally he was a guest worker during the Reagan administration. Um, he did some work here, and then he would go back. Something happened in Mexico where one of my brothers lost his right hand. Uh, there's no child labor laws in Mexico. And that took a big hit on the family uh, where my parents uh, had to immigrate both to the United States. Uh, so I became the head of household for, well, at the age of 14. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I was angry at the United States of America because it was my parents. <laughs> so there, there, there is a... The family separation will happen. When a family moves, well, all this crying about families being separated at the border, I don't buy it, okay? <laughs> uh, finally, uh, my dad, uh, once he got natural, he got his green card. By the way, um, this meeting is, uh, the most important person in this meeting here I want to recognize is Marti. Right, because is this your first meeting, Martin? So can you stand up? I want to invite to. So I didn't know Martin, but somebody invited him, and I want to. I want. I want to let you guys know he's the most important. And I think my whole activism is dedicated to people like Martin. He is not a citizen yet, but he's already getting his feet wet into this political world, and hopefully, he can make an educated decision and later when he becomes a huge citizen. He he chooses uh, wisely where he's going to end up, right? Uh, so we finally, we sell the chickens, the goats, and everything, and here we go to the United States of America, okay? Uh, my first transaction in the United States of America was at McDonald's in San Isidro, okay? Um, a coffee and a hash brown. I had three quarters. I came to the United States with three quarters in my pocket, a pair of jeans and a white T-shirt. Uh, I went and, and my brothers and sisters were so amazed. and They were saying, Marco, how did you do it? How did you buy? You don't speak English. I never said anything to them until later because the cashier spoke Spanish. Everybody speaks Spanish in the sunny <laughs> season. <laughs> right? Guys, my tax returns of 2005 are about $5 million in real estate. So three quarters became $5 million because that's what the United States of America is, right? Uh, I think the the lack of uh, wealth, 
I, I created a, a um, package that's, I call it the welcome package. It, it mutated into the survival mark, survival marketing kit that I have. So conservative survival kit. And in that kit, I'm putting the, um, the translation of the Constitution. I, it's a book that I can show you at the end. Uh, it's called Constitutional, Constitutional Soundbites in Spanish, uh, uh, Capsulas Constitucionales. So it's a founding document in Spanish. If I would have read that book when I came here, it would, things would have been so easy, <laughs> easier for me. <laughs> so I met Jennifer in high school, uh, three months into the country. I wanted to ask her out so bad because I knew that the, we would go on a break and I didn't ask her, maybe she would get a boyfriend and come back and things would have been really bad. <laughs> right? I used to carry a, a English Spanish dictionary with me and I finally asked her a date and she said yes. And six kids later, here we are. Okay? Um, I had my first pizza, my first fruit float with her. Uh, I went to drive in with her. Uh, every time I went to her house, middle, middle class house, I would go through the neighborhood. You can see everybody taking care of their yard. That's the America I fell in love with. Okay. She used to play the movie, the movie La Bamba every day. I would go to the house and I was like, man, these people really like this, this movie. And then finally one day she said, no, we're playing it for you. <laughs> I'm like, look, that's not even Mexico. I mean, I don't know. That's, uh, I guess that's the Mexico that, that people know here, right? Um, so I talked to my daughter, McKenna, this morning. And she said, Dad, when you're talking, please make sure you tell the names of all the kids. And you tell them how they were born so that people get to know you. And I'm like, well, look, my, my daughter is telling me how to, how to do this, right? So... Michael is 25. Amelia, uh, she's going to be 18. Amelia is the one I'm having a hard time with because I'm, I feel I'm losing her to the little left. Okay. Then Marco, who's 12. Uh, Diego, who's 12. Pantaleon. And McKenna, seven. Um, I didn't know there was an agenda. Like I said, when I went bankrupt, I was trying to figure out something happened. Somebody took my American dream, and I was going to go find out. I hear Trump, that he's going to bring jobs back, and I said, sign me up. Where, where do I sign? Guys, my clients were working one day a month. Uh, you guys went through it too, right? The note, uh, I did a lot of loans here in San Jose. We did a lot of... Uh, so San Jose got hit pretty bad too. Um Being there without electricity on my $2 million house, cooking on a camping stove, trying to figure out what, what happened. What, what happened? I mean, we were millionaires uh, one day and the next day, we don't have $20 for a gallon of milk for our kids. Well, Obama happened. I'm not going to blame Obama on the economy because, of course, we're all guilty about it, right? But he was responsible for the recovery. And I tried to work with Obama. I, I tried to work with all his packages, you know, Obama this, Obama that, making home affordable, the Obama, everything, right? <laughs> um, but nothing worked. It was just, it was, it was, it was like an, uh, everything was about hardship and recovery with him. And he spoke really nice. If you hear, hear Obama, he was saying, we must make sacrifices. We must come together to save our nation. And I was like, well, yeah, let's do that. But, but. I, I was doing it, and it wasn't going anywhere. Now, if you know a little bit that all the mortgage crisis, all those homes supposedly were being uh, – there was a stimulus packages to save people from uh, losing their primary house. But he was foreclosing on those houses. He was – Fannie Mae was getting a lot of – they were invested on all those homes. I, try, I, I was at the court trying to help all, all these clients that were being evicted, and the investor was Fannie Mae. And I, how is this working out? Um, when Trump says that he is going to bring jobs back, and, and I start following this man, 
I figured out that the the, the liberal left, and I'm not if, if you're a Democrat, and if, if uh, I'm not trying to tell you where to go, but the dollar is not backed by silver and gold anymore, as you know. It, it is backed by the spirit and the confidence of the American people. What I saw to the spirit and the confidence of the American people during the Obama administration was really bad. People were not making barbecues anymore. There was no more barbecues. That is a sign of a bad economy. Taco trucks on every corner is a sign of a bad economy. A sick economy will result in uh, flea market commerce. Now, Hispanics, Mexican-Americans like me that come from Mexico, we already know how to survive, survive in a bad economy. We will have taco trucks on every corner because in Mexico we already have uh, food stamps on every economy because you have to go around all those regulations. There's just no other way. Now, when my first video in, in American politics was against George Lopez because George Lopez was already talking bad about the president. He was already talking bad about Latinos for Trump what we call Latinos for Trump. Guys, I, I don't like identity politics. I didn't even know I was Latino until I got here. <laughs> to the United States. Okay? So, but, but we run with it because it, 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 it was a way to, to help Trump uh, to show that he had the support of Hispanics. So I told George Lopez, you're not even Mexican, man. What, what, you know, just, what are you talking about? You're the one that talks bad about us all the time, and now you're so offended. I ridiculed that guy because I spoke really bad in Spanish. If you look me up on, on YouTube, you're going to see some bad language in Spanish that I did because I knew he would understand. <laughs> he looked me up, and he said, hey, you got to call me. Call me. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wow, George Lopez is talking to me. Um. And he would get drunk and, and talk to me again. And I said, you know what, Joe Lopez, if you want to settle this, let's settle it on, on, on TV and I'll go and fight you. He's like, you got it. And one day he was really drunk. He said, you know what? When I see you, I'm going to put my 38 in your chest and you, you're going to see what's happened to you now. I said, George Lopez, I can't believe what you're saying, man. You're actually a second amendment. <laughs> High five. <laughs> High five, George Lopez. <laughs> uh, then he blocked me and I never heard about him again but I couldn't believe that my voice was able to go I mean America is real guys the president is a person like you and me he's there I mean the White House is there this is the Constitution is real you know I'm going to read a what I what what really reminds me, and Martin, you're going to read this when you become a naturalized citizen. And pay a little bit of attention to this. Uh, this is the oath that I took. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and adjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or a citizen that I will support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear through faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States of America when required by the law, that I will perform on combat service in the armed forces of the United States of America will require by law and that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose or evasion. So help me God. This is codified in the Immigration and Naturalization Act. Um, See, this, I was able to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America for the first time after I said this. And I, I, I you cry. You're going to cry, Martin. <laughs> you do this. You trust me, you're going to cry. Because my dream that started at nine, and now being 
one of you guys, it, it's the American dream. I was uh, at this big rally that we did uh, called MORE, the Mother of All Rallies, which was a rally of most of the uh, coalitions that were for Trump right after the election in 2017. So here I am speaking in front of thousands of people in front of the um, Washington, is it that Washington, the, the obelisk, uh, the monument. And as I am speaking there and I'm telling Americans what a great and noble nation you guys are, how generous you are, I'm like, wow. What started when I was nine, now I'm here. This is real. America is real. It is, it is a promise for a promise. If you do certain things and if you're willing to do certain things, the American dream is yours for the pick and it's there waiting for you. And then if you go to Washington and you read all, all the, the, what the framers have there for us, identity politics is, is tough, guys. It's not easy. Um, but for all these people that say English only and all that, I get it. But before we get there, we have to do some, some things. We have to fish. And when you fish, you have to use the bait that the fish likes, right? And some fish might not like the English as their bait. And the framers kind of knew that already. There is a note that the first 4,500 copies of the Constitution, 1,500 of those in Virginia were in German. Because most, they, I think one in every three of the citizens then did not speak English. So they wanted to make sure that this information was put in the language. So that's why I'm pushing this book in Spanish, because if we give this book to Juan, Pablo, and Pedro, the head of household, in Spanish, and they fall in love with this country the way I have, and they see that they are owners too, because they are owners of this country. The biggest problem that I have seen out there, and my message is for that kid, that is in the middle of nowhere. So you have a kid here who might be a Chicano or a Pocho, who still thinks he's Mexican, but he was not born in Mexico. And then George Lopez tells him, hey, we're Mexican. So and he's all fired up, and he feels guilty to be an American. And, and in psychology, kids cannot be happier than their parents. And, and anybody in, in academia knows that, that the, it's the parents' mark that we, we go to, we stay there. It's very hard to break through. That's why you have all these programs. That, where's the first kid in school that has been to college? And that there's so many, because they really want to, uh, people to break through that. California should be red. If we wake up all these Mexican-Americans, and I'm not, this is not a threat or anything, guys. But if we wake them up, we should go back to, to the red. Because Juan Pablo and Pedro, they're losing control in their household. The family is being separated at the kitchen table. The family is not being separated at the border. Juan, Pablo, and Pedro, they don't know what to do anymore. If they don't speak English, it's even worse. And now the kids are being empowered by all this liberal left ideology. Look, my eight, I'm a Trump supporter, probably one of the biggest Trump supporters, and I'm having a hard time with them, my daughter. Can you imagine Juan, Pablo, and Pedro that... All they do is just get up four in the morning, go to work, and come back, and, and they don't have the tools. So that's why, Martin, it's, you know, I'm so glad you're here. We need to find a million Martins out there. Because you have kids, right? Kids that are going to cast their vote. 32 million Latinos, Hispanics, are eligible to participate in this presidential election. Now, they think that about it. 30% of those are for Trump. And then the Democrats claim that the other 70% is theirs, but it's not true. About 30% of them can care less. They're up for grabs. We need to go and, 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 and get those people to participate. Because if we get them to participate, not only we're going to reelect Donald J. Trump, but we're going to retake the, the biblical values that um, 
I forgot you, Neil was talking about. We're going to retake our, our, through what the founder, founding fathers intended for this nation. We're going to be able to defend the American dream. That is the name of my speech today. Uh, this, you guys are my teachers. I'm, I'm writing a book. And hopefully you guys can tell me if I'm doing the right thing or should I just go back to, <laughs> to what I was. And, and, but I feel like I have gone so far that it's so hard for me to just uh, – Martin Luther King said that one, a mind once stretched to a certain dimension is so hard for – I mean, it can never go back to its original form. And I feel that my mind, my mind has been stretched. You have no idea how much. Okay. So when I went to MSNBC and she is trying to push me there and she said, what problems? And I said, we're having problems here. What problems are you talking about? And I said, look, my culture is very dominant and that's imposing. And if you don't do something about it, you're going to have taco trucks on every corner. She stopped me right, right, right there, and they run with that, saying Marcos against tacos, Trump hates <laughs> Trump hates tacos. In the second debate, they literally did a wall of taco trucks outside the Trump Tower in, in Vegas. In Texas, they created something that's called Walk the Boat, where they put a registration um, register people in every taco truck with the face of Trump fight hate, you know, Trump hates tacos. The, 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 the campaign was so scary. I'm like, Marco, can you please not go to the media? We don't know what you said, but we can't control the, the hashtag was, was trending for weeks. So we, almost three thousands and thousands of articles were written. Do you remember? People from my hometown, which is a, a little ranchito in La Sierra, where there's 1,200 people, that's, that's, they were calling my mom saying, Senora, can you please, please tell Marco to stop saying that he's from here? <laughs> because there's newspapers that have come here to see if it's true that he's, because there was claims that I was Mexican, there was claims that, that I was paid, uh, paid a uh, troll, that I, um, so I saw the power of the mainstream media, and I saw the evilness of these people. I mean, they put me, they put makeup on me to make make me look darker. They put the camera lower so I could look fatter because I was talking about tacos. And they, <laughs> <laughs> these people are evil guys. On election night, um, I was at the headquarters of uh, Univision. Okay. So as I'm flying, I look down on all the lights, and I, I think to myself, I have been in every one of these TVs. So when my dad went back to Mexico, when I was around 15, that I was missing them a lot, he took two movies. He took The Goonies, and he took Coming to America with no subtitles. Because in Mexico, we, have, we had all the movies, but with subtitles. But with no subtitles, I would watch those movies. And I was trying to figure out what my parents were. And then when I saw the Goonies, I saw them talking about pizza. And then I, I, I was in Miami last month at the Ampest, a big, huge, uh, uh, at, at the Doral, um, Trump Doral National. All the activists were there, all the MAGA, if they would have bombed that place, the, the whole movement would have gone down. That's exactly, that's actually what uh, Junior said, Trump Junior. And I met um, Robert Dobby, the guy in the Goonies. You know, that Italian guy. The, the... I met him and I, I said, I want to tell you a story about my, my, my American dream. I, mean, I watched you a thousand times. <laughs> and now... I came through the through time into the TV and I'm speaking to you right now. He was like, "Wow, thank you, thank you for telling me that." <laughs> the American dream is real, guys. And going back to what uh, gold and silver, the liberal left demoralizes because the the more demoralized the, uh, you are, the, the less value of the dollar, the less value of our 
our way of life. And they did it to me, guys. I fell for it. I was so demoralized when, when I went bankrupt. And I, I wrote an article, actually, and I said, because I figured out, I actually ended up in rehab, okay? Uh, so I was, I was learning uh, 12 years clean and sober. Uh, I was reading about recovery, right? <laughs> Emotional and spiritual and recovery. But then I saw the financial recovery goes right next to it. Most of the divorces out there, because I was helping a lot of people that were in financial hardship, and I saw what the problem was. I said, you're a liberal. That's what your problem is. <laughs> That's why you're going bankrupt. <laughs> no, no, I didn't know that yet. Um, if you see a liberal and, and they, they are so angry, tell them, look, you need to smile. It's important to just smile because my financial recovery depends on it. <laughs> the value of the dollar depends on you smiling. So that's why when Trump comes and he says he's going to build a wall, he's going to bring jobs back. And you saw that on my video. I said that four years ago. Um, that is the antidote to, 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 the, to the liberal left. And I apologize if anybody's from the liberal left here. I, I, I'm just trying to give you my perspective. Somewhere in the middle where we, we meet, okay? Of course, th there could be um, there could be bad on the other side too. But what I have what I have learned is that there are two agendas, and that my primary pur purpose and, and my my website and, and everywhere with Latinos for Trump is to expand the participation of Hispanics in American politics. And of course, to balance the disproportion, because going back to Univision, I was probably one, the one percent there. Um, probably the, the Hispanics are all already on a tyrannical uh, ideology. They, they're all on the left. If you watch Univision and Telemundo, and that's why the True Channel, which is the channel that I—that's where I have my Taco Politics show. It's like what, we're trying to, to, you know, deal with them. And when they when they bring something crazy, like when Jorge Ramos comes up with all his writing, we try to give a, our perspective. I saw Jorge Ramos. I saw his agony. And I think that's probably the best. You know, we don't make a lot of money in politics, right? But my payment was seeing Jorge Ramos, seeing that guy going from that mountain of uh, iron of, arrogance and, and seeing him how every time they get a state for Trump, he would just go lower, <laughs> lower. When they finally gave Florida, which a lot of Floridians are listening to us right now, that was it. And the, the guys in, in the Univision headquarters were like, they, they were angry. They were throwing things. They didn't care about the programming anymore. Like, just throw Marco. And they would just throw me. And, and then, <laughs> then when I was talking, you can go and see it. It's there. You, I would just, uh, they would be asking me, so Marco, what do you think about the whatever? They just, and then I would see tacos on all the monitors. And I'm like, <laughs> what does tacos have to do with, with, with politics? Well, they didn't care. They only care about ratings. They wanted to show a, a, a Mexican that hates tacos, right? That was their big, that's why they invited me. They invited me to ridicule me, to, to just say, look, you Mexicans out there, if you dare, if you dare vote for Trump, if you dare uh, try to get out of the reservation, this is what's going to happen to you. We are going to. There was movie. There was um, news outlet banned outside my house for about a week. In the mainstream, uh, the, the the campaign would say, "Marco, don't don't talk to them." I'm like, I have to go get groceries, guys. <laughs> The National Univision guy, which I he's he's got it coming. I'm gonna get him one of these days. Um, he just came to my door with the camera rolling and everything. Okay, why why did you call us uh, underdeveloped and, and primitive? Because they pissed me off. And I finally said, look, you guys are we as Hispanics are primitive and underdeveloped. I didn't want to say it in an offensive way, but of course. They took it the wrong way. And I'm like, look, guys, I went to school in Mexico. 
the curriculum. And you know, this it's about being an underdeveloped country. Everything, just like we talk here about uh, foreign policy and we talk about uh, the ceiling debt, right? In Mexico, because it's an underdeveloped country, they don't have a ceiling debt, but they have a, a foreign debt. They have external debt. And the whole economy is based on that. What did you say? A lot of it. Oh, a lot of it. Well, that's my, that's my 18 year old uh, perception. But I said, we are. <laughs> You don't think we're pretty much underdeveloped? <laughs> well, Mexico, that's exactly what I tried to say. So Televisa calls me, um, all the papers are like, Marco, what the hell are you doing over there in the United States? Why are you talking bad about us? I'm like, no, it's you guys that you, 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 you force us to emigrate. You have 30% of your, not, of your citizens up here and you're doing nothing for us. The more Mexicans that I, re that I remain, the better for them, because then I want to go and visit, you know, and take my dollars over there, or maybe build two, three houses with all the money that I'm making here. And maybe I'm not paying taxes for it because I have to work with two, three different names because I have integrated. Right? I also did say, and, and uh, this is rolling, and probably a lot of people are going to get mad at me, but I said uh, on Univision, a lot of my... And I can talk about Mexicans because I'm one of them. We would rather make a thirty. We would rather spend thirty thousand dollars on a quinceañera <laughs> than going to see the local attorney so that I can fix my papers. I would rather have that sixty thousand dollars suburban dorada, you know, or that big shiny car than going. And fixing my, my maybe my second DUI, and I'm losing my papers now because you're not supposed to drink and drive. Well, Martin, that's for, that's for you. Careful with that. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> yes. Uh, I learned in recovery that um, I my culture, my heritage is a great heritage. Tequila, mariachi, it's awesome. <laughs> But I also learned, I became aware of certain habits that I have, certain um, ways of life that perhaps, see, if you don't go to school or if you're not close to God, there's certain things that you never learn as a kid, right? And maybe it's traditional, maybe it's cultural, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> it's a bad, what would I say, generational uh, way of doing things that will only get us in trouble. In America, it's just telling you, structure your life. That's it. And, you know, so that we, we're driving the same roads. It's not like you, they have different roads for people that drink and people don't, right? <laughs> going back to the dollar. You know, my dollar is going to go down in volume. My, we're losing Californians. And we're losing them they don't tell us, but they're tired of what's going on. Um, I live, uh, what, District 11, so District 12, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I'm glad that he's, he's running, and I hope when you're there, I mean, please um, take on all these issues and take on all, because California... <laughs> Beautiful. And I, I won't get my wife out of California. She's a California chick. And she's, she's not, she's not going to go. I tried. I tried. Well, maybe I should go to Florida. No, no. You know, Florida, I went to a coffee shop the other day and, and I got a cafe con leche and a little pastry, uh, whatever they call it. Uh, croissants. And it wasn't even $5. And I even got my friend another one. I'm like, wow. Here you go to get a coffee and it's twenty five dollars. You know, twenty dollars. I'm like, oh shit. So, guys, there, 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 there is there's room for improvements here, and I, I know there's the new Californias here. You guys, thank you for all the work you're doing. I did a lot at the beginning. I did about forty of the grievances with you guys, and I kind of lost a little bit of. The, I got lost the drift there, but I, I appreciate what you're doing, and and uh, Paul Preston, he. 
he likes me. He said that if I don't help him, he's gonna call me the the hot dog man and not not the taco man. So, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna help him. Uh, and I don't know how I'm doing in time here, just to. Uh, I, um, do I have more? Okay. Um, what what I see, guys, again, going is very important. If you can help me, if you see a Pablo. Pedro, Juan, out there, Martin. Go, go and tell him, just like the Jehovah Witnesses, guys. I'm not saying to become a Jehovah Witness, but hey, Pablo, do you have five minutes to speak about the funding documents for this country? Do you have, do you know how this country was formed? Because when they hear that there is a declaration of independence, that secure those values, and then the Constitution that secure those values, and the Bill of Rights. And because of that, they have so much power on their hands. I mean, these kids are owners of this country, equal owners, just like you and me. They are the ones that are going to help save, because it's their generation too. They don't want a country with taco trucks on every corner. They don't. And for all this, this indigenous groups that talk about they stole this land from us and blah, blah, blah. And, and I tell them, look, man, California had five owners when it was Mexico. Do you really want to go back to that Mexico? Because you, you will be, uh, <laughs> I mean, you will, be, you will be working for General Vallejo or Mr. Moraga. And, and that's it. Or well, his kids, right? So... And they know it. Hispanics, they understand. If you see somebody, uh, an activist like me out there, be, be, have a little compassion for us. We, we le I'm learning. I'm grateful to be one of you. I really am. And today, this morning, my kids were right, right by the fireplace, and I told them, uh, kids, I'm going to go speak about the American dream. And they're so excited that, because they're, they, they're studying Martin Luther King. And they're studying uh, Cesar Chavez and all that. Now, Cesar Chavez, great, great activist. He talked a lot about the promised land. And he talked about bringing his people to the promised land. I, I feel that he didn't leave a successful successor of his message. And the liberal left, they kidnapped everything. Uh, and they have hijacked his message. And now they say it's for them. I don't, I don't think that's the case because we made it to the promised land and now we have to defend the promised land. We have to defend the American dream because guys, why would, it's like seeing people that defend Egypt when you're out of Egypt. I mean, <laughs> why? We already made it out. Why are this, my, this Mexican Americans defending a Mexico that doesn't exist? I, I get it. It's, it's, it's beautiful to say, it's beautiful to talk about Pancho Villa, it's beautiful to talk about this, this, this man that shit history, but we have to start here, an American first, right? I don't know if you are from, you are from Asia out there, uh, would you defend, I don't know, I don't know what country you're from, but would you defend that country first? I think you're going to defend this country first, right? And um, this is the country that my kids are gonna grow on. And I am going to fight for it. I'm gonna defend the country that Jennifer showed me. And that's why I'm here with you guys today. And again, I am not a professional speaker. Uh, I would welcome any advice. Like I told you, it's, uh, I'm not, I haven't quit my day job yet, but, <laughs> but uh, what I have seen what I have seen Donald Trump do, I saw this man give his heart and his soul in the campaign trail in 2016. And that has awakened in me and, and a lot of people uh, the, the, the passion to be Americans and the passion to dream again, the passion to, to, to believe again. Because we were not losing our homes, we we're not losing our wives, we we're not losing our social prestige, we we're not losing uh, uh, all that. We were losing hope 
and we were losing confidence in ourselves. So Americans, once again, you are a great, generous nation. You took me in, you gave me a wife, you gave me six kids, and I am eternally grateful. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Okay, so uh, a couple things. We'll open it up to uh, questions and answers. We'll try to um, keep keep your questions brief. If you have any comments for him or something like that, you can. He'll be around after. Let's try to keep it to questions. Uh, I'll be passing the mic around. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and thank our volunteers right now. Thank you to Mike Boy, faithfully helps us out. And of course to the church. All the church is so gracious to have us here. Uh, and then our volunteers, my parents, my Yo soy René Labán y estoy con mi querido amigo Rubén Rabaza, que me está mirando, porque ahorita le piché una ahí duro que... El nombre más buscado en Google era Tulsi Gabbard. ¿Conoces a Tulsi Gabbard, Rubén? Ahora la acabé de ver. Muy conocida en su casa. Pero fíjate. En su casa es en Hawái. Los latinos de habla hispana que ven Telemundo, Univisión, las dos cadenas principales, no vieron esta transmisión. ¿Cómo se van a sentir americanos? ¿Cómo se van a asimilar... ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo vamos a ser parte de esta gran nación? Eh, ese puede ser la próxima eh, debate que hubieran de los demócratas. No, pero eso no lo pagaron los mexicanos. No lo pagó el Chapo, que lo pagaron fueron los que compraron la droga. Y tú dices... Bienvenidos a The True Channel. Tenemos una reportera con nosotros, una corresponsal que se llama Ingrid Valerino. Hemos amanecido aquí en el Double Tree Hotel. Están muchos, muchos latinos congregados esta mañana apoyando a la campaña de Donald Trump. Vamos a darle las gracias por su servicio. Pero eso no es culpa de Donald Trump, mi gente. No es culpa de Donald Trump, ni es culpa del vicepresidente, ni es culpa de este gobierno. Es culpa del papá y la mamá que estaban en El Salvador, que estaban en, en México, que estaban en Nicaragua y le dijeron, lárgate para allá solo. Mira. Entonces estaba un muchacho el otro día que se mató con la se murió con la anita ahogada. Y era culpa de Trump. ¿Cómo también? eso va a ser culpa de Trump? No. Entonces, no, lo que pasa es que Trump habla claro. Que si el peine hubiese tenido solamente 10, este muchachito nada más que tenía que hacer, va, 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 vaciar 10, soltar, meter otro peine. ¿Qué diferencia hubiese? Este es el de Dayton, Ohio. El de Dayton, Ohio. Porque el primero, o sea, Patrick Cruz fue, que se está vivo todavía, no se arrepiente de nada, eh, fue 45 minutos. Venezuela era el gran, el gran mecena de todos estos vagos de, de la, del izquierdismo y del mundo progre. Pero tú no tienes tu Facebook aquí, tú siempre haces tu Facebook que la gente te escriba, no, está escribiendo mucha gente. No voy a decir ciertas cosas por secrecía, pero me preocupa. Porque ¿Qué, tipo de, ¿qué tipo de plataforma es? ¿Una plataforma informática palabras, de aplicación militar? ¿Filtraban porque, palabras? Sí. Cuando no les gustaba, no, no, en eh, Google filtraban esas no, palabras. No, pero es que si tú, si tú Google ahora ya declaró un ingeniero que trabaja para ellos que tiene una campaña sistemática de manipulación informática en contra del presidente Trump. Usted está en sintonía de The True Channel. El problema de, los, de, de las economías. Que, que siempre se han apoyado en esquemas marxistas. Sí, nos da tiempo de uno más antes de ir a la siguiente pausa. Es ex aliado del expresidente Barack Obama. Habría sido considerado un candidato destacado para la nominación presidencial del Partido Demócrata. Sin embargo, sí podría haber estudiantes conservadores o sí, padres sí, conservadores. Sí, pero eso no es el requerimiento. Tiene que ser un profesor. Oh, el requerimiento y es el, imagínate si ese profesor sale a la luz y dice, yo soy conservador. Claro, Pierde el trabajo. Los jóvenes mexicanos, Ajá, ¿cómo es, se sienten con esto? Este es el problema más grande que tiene la comunidad hispana y por qué se le es tan difícil llegarle el mensaje conservador. Las dos cadenas más grandes de los Estados Unidos que de habla hispana son Univisión y Telemundo. President Trump is not racist. Él no es racista. 
Trump's not racist, but the race baiting, race hating Democrats are. This president is absolutely not racist. I am Boricua, and Trump is not racist. President Trump isn't racist because there's no such thing as an illegal alien race. And, and then uh, Linda was from the uh, New California. She wanted to say a couple words. You want to say a couple? Can she okay, say a couple yeah. words? Okay. What what can you tell us? What what's what can we? Uh... Well, my name is Linda Martinez Hannah, and I'm also with Martinez for Trump. So all these little things that Marco did on the <laughs> um, he's a great activist. So New California is going to have some people. It's not the state of Jefferson. Everybody confuses. We're not spreading into three. Everybody says the only people that tell you it's not going to happen are the people that know nothing about it. We right now, we the people are fed up. You know, there's, I am even fed up with, I know it's going to hurt a lot of people here, Republicans. I'm tired of the rhinos. I'm tired of the rhinos. They're the ones that are stopping our president right now for getting things stuff. And that's what makes me mad. We the people need to stand up. And it doesn't matter. I was raised a cat, um, I was raised a Democrat because that's what they tell you. You have to be. Uh, they put all these things and they care for the poor and the minorities. Well, guess what I was told? So what a bunch of lies. How can I vote for a party that is pro-killing babies, for uh, homosexuality, for everything that I, as a person, does not stand for? So um, in the middle, I live in El Dorado County. My husband is here. I live in Southern California, California. My husband, he's in the big room. He is the, um, he's also the uh, chair and the senator. And... New California is we the people fed up with it. We are fed up. We've been married um, 30 and a half years. We got married at Cathedral of Faith. And we live now in over, over, here, uh, over here. So um, I was raised in San Jose. And I just want you guys to know that the people that say it's not going to happen is the people that know nothing about it. Mary, you know. Carla, you know because we are there. What's happening right now? As we speak right now. We are modeling after them. And we the people, that's who we are, all of us together. I know a lot of Republicans come in and they yeah. tell us, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when they get there, they're not even supporting our president, the best president ever. And they're not supporting him. You know, and I said, for Hispanics, for women, and for blacks, I'm two out of the three. How can I not love this man? I'm from a border town. I know what crosses that border. We had a sheriff that was just killed in El Dorado County. Anybody hear about it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because cartel is down the street from us. We live in God's country, don't we? We live right. We live in God's country. They don't want to talk about it. Let my husband just tell you a little bit about what's going on with. Hello. I should be Marco here. I could probably speak for another half an hour, an hour. <laughs> hey, folks. I uh, really appreciate my wife. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Because she cares about her country. She got me involved in this movement about six months ago. I moved up to El Dorado County, got married with the Federal Faith, went there for like 20 some years. We love this. County, we love the Bay Area, we love California. Moved up there to fish, fished a lot. Now I'm a fisherman or in California. Awesome. Yeah. 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 We are normally we've got a fifty two counties in this state have senators, some of people like myself. And everybody. We're actually forming a government that has its own just like this can be just like Kentucky and Maine and and Virginia and West Virginia. So that's what's happening right now. A lot of people don't know about it, but if you go to NewCaliforniaState.com, you'll find out. Folks, you're paying. You're paying. You'll get some information. I'm glad 
to ask that because we've been okay. talking yeah. about yeah. 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 well five years, but two years as declaring independence from California. We have 52 counties involved right now. We're enjoying the fact that we're going to change everything in, in the whole state. We have no representation. We have a super majority in this state. We have seven Go assembly ahead. people that are concerned. So it's, it's a huge deal. So just go to New California State, you'll learn more. If you check on whatever county you're in, you'll get somebody like Charlotte and uh, in, in, uh, Maryland in this county. If you're in El Dorado County, you're going to get me. You know, and uh, we're, we're teaching people. It's a 401c, 501c4 organization that's educational. And right now, we're at the third step. So enjoy, enjoy, look at it. And if we are, do you have letters you can send to the President of the United States? Handwritten letters, and you can give it to them. We will want to hand it to President Trump. You now would have heard it. Somebody would take it to his office. Let him know what's going on in California, and we need him. And he is backing us up. Okay. Right. So we the people. We Thank you. The people. Okay, so we got to get to uh, questions. We got to make time for two or three questions. Feel free to leave me too. We got a hand up right here. Please keep your questions short. Please keep your answers short. They'll be around in a while. Thank you. Uh, hold on, Martha. Um, I just have a question for you here, daughter. You said you have been a little bit of an Asian for eight years. So what is your record talking to her about um, in terms of her liberal ideas? You know, I think that most uh, is guided by example, right? It's just uh, you not do do as I say, but do as I do. I, I, there was an article written, and you can go see it at the San Francisco Chronicle. I wrote it uh, because they came to me and they said, Marco, we think that the kids of the parents that voted for Trump, they're not going to vote for him because she's right with it. She's going to be able to vote <coughs> in 2020. So I took the challenge. And uh, it's the mainstream media is really, really throwing everything at them. But she's already watching my videos. And she's already correcting me on a few things. And she's going to create her own YouTube channel. And she's going to dissect my videos. And she's going to talk about it. So, again, we can't force people to think like us, but we can show them, right? We, we, we can, um, we can guide by example and, and, you know, not just promoting something, but also leading that, that she, one thing that I can tell you that she's very happy with me. She says that I respect that you walked the streets of New York with your sign. And she is also vocal like me, so I feel bad for the people on the other, on the other side that I, you know, I've seen her. But you know what? Um, again, she's gonna make her own decisions, but I want to do my part, and I'm doing it. And she knows I'm here today, and uh, I gave her one of my signs. She's actually the one that corrected me on the let's talk about politics. So she's already participating on this. So it's it's. I used to have let's talk about politics. She said, no, that it has to be let's talk about politics. So she is already part of the movement. And again, liberals are our are, are kids, their parents, they're so it's not like we can we have to deport them or anything. You know, they're gonna be there. But we can show them again that again the dollar the dollar is it's a stake if they are liberal. <laughs> Okay. Is this on? Oh. Hello, my name is Goyo, and I work with different uh, Hispanic churches. Especially, I see a divide between the, the parents who speak Spanish and, and the kids who have, have come here and learn a lot of English or were born here and learn a lot of English. And these young people, they're not voting age. What? Can you give me some resources that I can share with these Latino churches? Small and big, and some of them are big churches. That they have a Latino congregation. How can I educate these kids? Can you give me some resources so they can get educated? Because they're voters. They're legal. But I need direction. Definitely. There is a, uh, Trump has a lot of evangelicals for Trump. Uh, 
there's there's a lot of uh, efforts to for churches. There's a faith-based coalition out there that we can plug you in with. But mainly, we have to go to the head of household. I think that Juan, Pablo, and Pedro, they have the answer. Because they're doing to Hispanics what they did to African Americans, I think, and they're trying to, to discredit or devalue the, the, the role of the head of household. And, and, and if they do that, they can have the skits, right? And Marxism, that's the 101, is the kids. It's the, the younger generation. They don't care about us anymore. But they, they're going after our kids. Right, we got one, one last one. Oh. Yeah, one, one last question. Hi, Marco. I'm very interested to know your opinion on what should be done about illegal immigration and the wall and all of that. What, what do you think is the right answer? <laughs> you know, I was asked by Telemundo, yes, uh, we were in, in San Diego, uh, because that is that is the million-dollar question. I will be a, a hypocrite if I told you that I don't want everybody to have the same opportunity I have and to become, uh, you know, I naturalize American citizen. Uh, the big question was why uh, are you, you know, why if you obtain uh, citizenship through maybe some sort of uh, amnesty? Because my parents were the ones that obtained that. Why are you against it? I'm, different problems, different solutions. I think that we we definitely need a, um, immigration reform. But then again. The attitude that I see on DACA, undocumented and unafraid, and I actually feel that DACA is a bad word. It has made so many Americans angry. And these kids, they need, they need my vote, right, to, to, to become citizens. But they're flipping me off and saying that, oh, you know, America is against Trump. Um, I think a, a, a approach by them a more grateful approach towards Americans. I think Americans are generous enough that they're, they will do the right thing. But we have to come to you. The nice roads, the nice buildings, they were already here when I came here. Uh, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you that a work permit, my personal opinion would be a work permit, not necessarily give a citizenship because that's what turned California blue. Uh, I can tell you that um, out of the 4 million people that were admitted, I don't see a lot of us. Uh, we should be jumping up and down um, and, and thanking the Republican Party, but they're not. So if we give all these uh, citizenships, uh, then there goes a the nation, right? Because these kids are, they're going, they're saying that I'm going to school, I'm going to learn, uh, I'm going to become a legal expert, and I'm just going to break the system. That, that, that's what they're telling us. Right. So why, it's like, it's like giving money to a, a an angry ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your credit card. <laughs> why, why am I going to give you money? I mean, you're going to destroy me. So I don't know. I, 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 I've been on a couple of inter, um one face to face with them, and I have told them, like, you know, don't you think, don't you think that if you just start being more grateful, more that approach would probably get you somewhere? Because they're there, there. I have this Venezuela lady screaming at me and saying, "Look, the only reason why I'm here is because I'll probably get killed in Venezuela." And and, and I was interviewing a DACA girl. She went to school. She's very smart, very pretty. They, I think they did her on purpose, so just intimidate me. And, and she's telling me her story. She said, why do you think I shouldn't be here? And blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, look, the citizenship that this ungrateful Venezuela has, that's screaming at me right now, we should take the citizenship away from her and give it to you. Yeah. Because you are invested here. She's not. So I think there's a lot of grateful people that shouldn't have a citizenship, especially... Especially, you probably agree with me with me here on this one, Ignacio. Why are we going to give a citizenship to somebody who is not really an immigrant? An immigrant is somebody who has transplanted himself, that has that's going to be here. That's not going to go back and buy the three houses in Mexico, right? right? right. And and thank you, Americans. See you later. By the way, 
You suck. Right, well, well, there goes my there, there goes my efforts, right? So I don't think a lot of the DACA kids uh, are, are ungrateful, but I, I think whoever it's like the liberal left is using them. Like those kids that are marching in Virginia right now and saying Donald Trump sucks, and that's they're using the kids, so they're using this. I call them the, the innocent minds of the Hispanic community. They're being polluted by this crazy ideology. The real Hispanic guys, the real, just to end here, the real Mexican American, Mexico has been raped, Mexico has been, the country corrupted, they have done so many things, but you know what? The spirit of Mexican people, they're, they're always going to smile and they're always going to have a taco ready to give you. Right. That's the real Mexican. That's if we talk to that one, they'll tell us how to fix things. They'll probably say, "Hey, you know what? I don't even need a citizenship. I just need the work permit to work." Because again, we had Trump won because we had the in, in the Spanish they call it "voto vergüenza," which is the, the vote in the classic Trump supporters that voted for Trump, but they were embarrassed, and that's why he won. And they were going crazy in Latin America, calling me, "Why did that happen?" I think there's going to be a lot of vengeful votes against Trump now, because let's let's be honest. I mean, if if I am a 17, uh, 18 year old kid, and my dad is illegal here, and he's being vilified, and he's being, uh, I'll probably vote against Trump just because of that, and and we don't want that. So Pablo, Juan, and Pedro that are here illegally, I don't hate the person, I hate the ideology. Right, because what's what's migrating from the from Mexico from all these countries is not people, right? Uh, you guys are religious people. You know that it's not human. It's it's, the, it's not the flesh we're fighting. The third world mentality that you grow up with in Mexico, it's there. It took me twenty years to get away from it, guys. We throw garbage out of the car, and I don't care if they get mad. For you, probably don't do it, but I I did it. <laughs> Because you go to Mexico and you see this beautiful ocean and full of garbage. Why is that? Because they're not America yet. But you're bringing these people here and they continue to think the same way. And that's why you have taco trucks on every corner. And that's why you have the sparks the same way. I got it. I got to go. let people go. Wasn't Marco great? Thank you for coming. All right. So.